hello! Today we are doing read-alike titles. If you like this, then you might like this. I never remember what we call this, but in the like bookseller librarian realm, this is called read-alike titles, uh, where basically if you say, hey, I really like this book, somebody who gives you recommendations can say, ah, if you liked that, possibly you would also like this. So I do these every once in a while and I really enjoy them. Hopefully you guys find them fun slash helpful. And uh, I thought we could just do another round of them. So strap in. I feel like a lot of them this time is like, if you like this adult version or this YA version, I have recommendation in the opposite direction. But anyway, let's just get into it. Okay, first up, if you liked Circe, I think you would also like Sister Song because both of them are essentially feminist, mythological retellings. Circe is obviously the Greek myth around Circe. And then Sister Song is with an old English folk ballad. I think it's called like the Ballad of the Two Sisters. This one is set in Greece. This one is set in sort of like right after the Romans leave the British Isles time period. And yeah, I think the quality of writing is very similar in both. I think the kind of approach to the mythic or sort of magical elements is very similar. And overall, I think if this was your kind of book, I think this would also be your kind of book. Also, both of them have absolutely beautiful covers. So there you go. There's another similarity. Okay, next. Uh, I think If You Liked How to Do Nothing by Ginny O'Dell, which was a big nonfiction hit uh, a couple years ago, I think last like three-ish years, this has gotten a lot of buzz. I think you would also like Do Nothing by Celeste Headley. So How to Do Nothing is much more of like a meditative, philosophical approach to the topic of what she, what Jenny O'Dell is talking about, the attention economy. So this idea of our inability to just like sort of be and not have our attention constantly taken up with things. Do Nothing is more of sort of the cultural and economic history of uh, particularly, I think, Americans fixation on productivity. And then it kind of segues into more kind of like practical tips. So I think that if you liked the that overall topic in this book, and you're looking for something a little less like lyrical, less philosophical, and more sort of like historical and pragmatic in the kind of nonfiction it is, I think that these definitely are a good companion set to think about fixations on productivity. Moving now into if you liked the adult or YA version, you might like the other. I've got a few of these. So first of all, if you liked For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing, I would recommend The Ivies by Alexa Dunn. Now I should disclaim, I consider Alexa to be a friend, so take this with a grain of salt. But I read both of these this year. They're both new releases. I gave both of them four stars. And I think they have very similar projects, just with sort of a different emphasis on different syllables kind of a thing. So For Your Own Good is an adult thriller set in an elite prep school where we're getting a lot with the teachers, where there is more than one murder, but it's not necessarily like a serial killer per se. And I would say the same with the Ivies, except the view because this is YA is more from the students, like more emphasis is on the students perspective, basically. Um, and this one is more like this elite boarding school where they're all trying to get into elite colleges. And anyway, murderousness ensues. Very similar settings and very similar sort of types of thrillers, but with different audiences in mind. Then if you liked While Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams, which came out this year and is an adult political thriller, I would recommend the which came out several years ago, but is a YA political thriller. Both of these are set in DC. Both of them are very fast moving thriller paced. Both of them have to do with the death of a Supreme Court justice. And this is my top mystery, I think, of the year. I gave this five stars. I gave this three and a half. I think the writing in this is very nice, but I don't know, like as a thriller, it wasn't as successful for me. This is like one of my favorite YA thriller type things I've read. I also just love Jennifer Lynn Barnes, so there you go. But anyway, this was a big book this year, so I thought I would mention this YA book which is very similar in its themes, but a little older and with a YA audience instead of an adult one. Then 
If you liked To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee because you enjoyed its exploration of racial injustice and oppression in the American South in the 1960s with child protagonists, I recommend Root Magic by Eden Royce, which is middle grade. So this often gets taught to young adults and like middle school and, and high school, but I don't know that it's necessarily like specifically aimed at that audience. Like I think it's aimed at a general audience, whereas this is very clearly aimed at a young audience. I also really love the incorporation of magic in this one. And I love the inclusion of Gullah traditions and culture. So I actually think like if, if I were going to just like hand one of these to a kid, I would certainly pick this one over this one, not just because of like age appropriateness, but just like I like more of the like things that this book is trying to do than this one at this point, even though the writing in this one is I would say better. So anyway, I think these have very similar settings and themes. Another adult and YA one. So if you love like I do the Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, because you love twisted fairy tale retellings, I recommend Beast and Beauty by Soman Chanani. This is a new release this year, and this is aimed at, I would say, middle grade to young adult. So I don't know that this is like as thematically complex, but I would say both of them are like their project is to take the fairy tales that we all know in the canon of like European based folk tales and to flip them on their head. So this one is much more like grisly and like very focused on feminist themes, whereas this one is retelling from a m kind of a more intersectional point of view. And I would say it's not as intense <laughs> because it's not aimed at adults the way this one is, but same projects, but slightly different audiences. Okay. And I think that was all or most of the YA versus adult ones I had. So I will then say that if you liked My Life in France by Julia Child, I would recommend 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Hanf. I think the reason I would recommend, but both of these are sort of like post-World War II set in or around characters who are in a Europe that is recovering from that moment. Uh, we have an American, like a plucky, charismatic American coming into both of these. And while these are letters, so this is epistolary versus this is a memoir, I think it has the same kind of like charm and warmth in both of these. Like these both just feel like very warm hugs, cozy versions of memoir slash like nonfiction. So I think if you like this, this is definitely worth seeking out though it is obviously much shorter. This one I can't get into a lot of details on because it would be spoilers, but I'm just going to say that The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, which is like the big romance book this year, deservedly so, this is my favorite romance of the year so far, does remind me a lot of Heart of Obsidian in ways that I can't fully get into. I will, I guess the thing I can say is I definitely think these are both strong grump sunshines. And I guess this is like a lower stakes version of Morality Chain to some degree, especially at the end. I can't talk like there's spoilers, but just know that I love this book and I love this book and they remind me a lot of each other in certain ways. So if you've read this, this is just another reminder to go pick up Heart of Obsidian. <laughs> and if you're a lover of Psy Changeling, pick up The Love Hypothesis. I will say this is contemporary. This is sci-fi romance. So a little difference in terms of the genre. Also, this is the 12th in a series and really you should just go back and read from the beginning. But I have encountered people who just read this on its own and they still really love it. So anyway, very vague, but I, these remind me of each other. Okay, then I want to say that if you like Kate Daniels, I think you would also like the Fatma series from P. Jelly Clark, just because there's a lot of the same components in both of these. Both of them have strong female leads. Both of them are set in a speculative version of our world. Both of them have basically mystery plot engines. Kate is like a mercenary who does investigations. Fatma is an actual police detective and they both have romantic elements. I would say, and I, you know, I would actually say it's about the same. Like it's a, it's a major part of the book, but I wouldn't say it's like the dominant part of both of these types of books. I think tonally this one reads more like 
paranormal romance than this does. Though technically this somewhat qualifies, but I think this just feels more like in that genre. Anyway, I think that these are actually quite similar in a lot of ways, like these two series are. So I would say that if you have loved Kate Daniels, it's worth at least giving the series from Peter Jelly Clark a chance. Also, it's just awesome in its own terms, but I think that there's some overlap in people who would like both of these. Next, I would say that if you liked Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade last year, I highly recommend The Love Con by Sericia Glass, and that is coming out at the beginning of December, so I don't have my physical copy yet, but they are very similar books, and if you liked this, you should absolutely go read The Love Con. So this one, the setup is fan fiction is sort of like the geeky connection between our leads, and The Love Con, it's more cosplay, so our female lead is in a reality show competition with cosplay and like her final challenge is to come home and like do a costume with her best friend who's trying to make his move on her and so it's sort of like a fake dating to love. This also has somewhat of a fake dating element in it. I will say this has more of like a miscommunication trope in it than the love con does. But anyway, both of them have plus size heroin, so there's fat phobia and like dealing with that BS in a relationship uh, because both of the heroes are very conventionally attractive. Like in the love con, he is apparently a doppelganger for Chris Hemsworthy as Thor, so. Anyway, I think that there's a lot of parallels in these books, and if you liked this last year, definitely look for The Love Con, which is coming out later this year. Then I'm gonna say that if you like The Secret History by Donna Tartt, I would recommend Trying Madam by Phoebe Wynn. Now, I think this is not nearly as good of a book, so if what you liked about the Secret History is just how well crafted of a book that is and how great the writing is, etc. This might be a little bit of a letdown, but in terms of like elite boarding school, elite school setting, and then like the entanglement of faculty and students in plots, I think that it's very similar. I think they both have a very gothy tone. So if you're just looking for a hit of gothy school murderousness and death, I think that this could scratch that same itch. Okay, then I have like a three-way recommendation. So if you liked either the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, or My Heart is a Chainsaw, or The Last Final Girl, both of those last two are by Stephen Graham Jones, I think all three of these are very similar books in terms of their project. Very meta, very much like examining the horror slasher subgenre, and this one is more humorous and sort of like light and mad cappy in its tone than either My Heart is a Chainsaw or The Last Final Girl. I would call both of those more literary horror, whereas this is more sort of just like fun commercial fiction version of horror. Um, but all of them have very similar projects. So if you liked any one of those books, I think it's worth looking for the others. Then this is a, a very old comparison, but now that I have read the whole of the first series of uh, Camp Half-Bloodness, um, I do want to say that if you liked Harry Potter, you're either looking for more or you're looking to not read Harry Potter anymore. I would say that Percy Jackson, I think is a great read instead title. And I would also say, I think that as like a series, it is better structured in its macro plot. I think that it is a little unfocused in the macro plot for the first two books. The first two books in Percy Jackson are fun and like engaging and I totally see why people were into it, but it's really by the time you get to the third, fourth, and fifth book in that initial five book series that it really goes up a level. And now that I'm in the spinoff series, which is the Heroes of Olympus, which is also a five book series, I've read two of them, I think that that macro plotting continues to be very strong. And I would say better than Harry Potter, more consistent and clearer. I don't know, I, I maybe it's my retrospective bias, totally possible, but I actually think that this is a little bit better than Harry Potter. So I would say read this instead of that. Then I would say that if you liked Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schulte a few years ago, I would recommend Down Comes the Night by Alison Saft, which came out earlier this year. And I think that both of these are YA murder mysteries set in a speculative setting. And both of them have a type of isolated close circle mystery element going. I will say that Down Comes the Night is much more of a romance than Four Dead Queens, though there is an element of that in Four Dead Queens. But I think in terms of like the kind of world building that happens, which is not very deep, but enough to make it interesting as a setting, 
it's pretty similar in that respect. And just overall, I think that they are similar in their vibe, in their project, in their tone. If you liked one, I think you'd probably like the other. And then the last one that I had was that if you liked Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty, then I recommend Her Last Holiday by C.L. Taylor. And actually, I would say that I recommend Her Last Holiday instead of Nine Perfect Strangers because I think Her Last Holiday is a much more successful book, in my opinion. I personally liked it a lot better, but both of them are set at sort of like these well wellness resort things. Both of them have an enigmatic and possibly bad slash murderous leader. And like both of them have a lot of secrets from the past kind of stuff happening. I think Nine Perfect Strangers is going for more of a sort of humorous tone in some places than Her Last Holiday ever has. But they're very similar projects. And I think Her Last Holiday is better written, better as a thriller and all around just like a better book. So yeah, I think that does it for this round of read alike titles. Definitely let me know what you guys thought of some of the comparisons I made. Let me know if you have other read alikes for some of the books that I mentioned. And yeah, I think that will do it for me for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please like subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye.